Hello, I'm Pat O'Hare, Chief Market Analyst for Briefing.com. Today is Monday, September 15th. Monday marked an extremely ugly session on Wall Street with the S&P 500 falling 4.7%, marking the largest one-day percent drop since the first session following the attacks on September 11, 2001. Losses were driven by severe turmoil in the financial sector. Specifically, Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy, Merrill Lynch sold itself to Bank of America, and AIG is looking for a massive amount of cash in an attempt to stave off failure. The S&P 500 closed at its lowest level since 2005 and is now down 18.8% year-to-date and down 24.3% from its October 2007 all-time high. The financial sector, which plummeted 10.4%, took the brunt of the selling interest, although weakness was broad-based with all 10 economic sectors posting a loss. Decliners outpaced advancers by a whopping 81 to 1 ratio on the NYSE. A total of 1.88 billion shares exchanged hands at the NYSE, which would normally be considered heavy volume, but is somewhat light considering the session's developments. Lehman Brothers filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection after no buyers were willing to save the troubled 158-year-old firm due to a lack of a government backstop. None of Lehman's broker-dealer subsidiaries will be included in the bankruptcy and will continue to operate. Lehman listed $613 billion in debt, which is the largest bankruptcy on record according to reports. Respected analyst Meredith Whitney said on CNBC that Lehman's large balance sheet will need to be liquidated swiftly, which will drive the prices of assets lower across the board. In turn, financial companies will hold assets that are not worth as much, leading to further write-downs, Whitney said. Merrill Lynch agreed to be sold to Bank of America in an all-stock deal for $29 per share, or roughly $50 billion, a 70.6% premium to Friday's closing level. Bank of America said it was willing to pay the premium because the benefits were appealing and it still believes it is a compelling price, noting there was the possibility that others were interested. According to the Wall Street Journal, the move came after federal officials strongly encouraged the sale due to concern that the firm was approaching failure. Fed officials may have encouraged the deal, although Bank of America CEO Lewis said there was no pressure from regulators. Insurance giant AIG is planning to make several moves in an attempt to stave off a credit rating downgrade and possible failure, including selling some of its most valuable assets to raise capital, according to the Wall Street Journal. The company was in talks with the Fed to borrow as much as $40 billion, according to reports. But a late session Wall Street Journal reports that the Fed will not be lending money to AIG and instead ask Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan Chase to lead a consortium of banks to make $70 billion to $75 billion available to AIG. The idea that the Fed believes AIG needs even more than the $40 billion originally asked for unsettled the market, sparking a late session decline that sent the financial sector and the broader market to settle at session lows. The financial market turmoil sparked a rally in Treasuries, with the 10-year note spiking more than 2.5 points, sending its yield down to 3.41% from Friday's close of 3.74%. In addition, traders bid up the price of Fed Funds futures for Tuesday's FOMC meeting, which now suggests an 80% chance of a 25 basis point rate cut to 1.75%, compared to no chance one week ago. Commodities, as measured by the CRB index, fell 3.3%, saw a steep sell-off with energy-related names falling the most. Gasoline futures down 8.2%, crude oil down 7.1% at 94.06 per barrel, and heating oil down 5.9% all got clipped. Gold, which was up 3.4%, managed to gain as investors flocked to the precious metals' perceived safety. The latest industrial production reading was a disappointment. According to the Federal Reserve, industrial production fell 1.1% in August, which was much steeper than the expected decline of 0.3%. An 11.9% decline in auto output and a 3.2% decrease in utility output acted as major drags. Capacity utilization fell by one percentage point to 78.7%. I'm Pat O'Hare for Briefing.com. Thanks for listening, and have a good evening.